Welcome to the EHF Euro 2018 live show presented by Lidl. I'm your host Rafael Ayan coming to you from our studio in Zagreb. And we are really getting down to the nitty gritty now as it is the finals weekend. And in fact, the kick of the throw off between France and Spain is only about 45 minutes away. That is the first semi final. And with that, I invite you to vote and let us know who do you think will win the semi finals. This is our emoji vote. So if you think France will win, you have the rooster to respond to as an emoji. If you go for Spain, it's the bowl. Then in the second one with Sweden against um, Denmark, it's the couch for Sweden and the beer for Denmark. Now let's start looking ahead here. Our first encounter sees France face Spain. The throw off is at six o'clock here in Arena Zagreb. France are still undefeated after their six wins in a row. Spain, they've lost two matches so far. That's against Denmark and against Slovenia. On the Spanish side, there has been a change to the squad as Abak Sturbik has been called back to replace Gonzalo Perez de Vargas. Now, yesterday at the media, call we got the players to talk to us and they revealed what they are looking most forward to in the, their encounter and how they see the matchup so let's hear it now it's time to talk about medals because we opened the door to medals we must do a perfect match we know that they are champions of all the competitions but we we want to be in this final this is our dream and we will fight for this we have players who can shoot from nine meter maybe one or two more than they have Karabatic, Dikamem, Remedy, Mae, they've got plenty of, of, of people and plenty of possibilities, so it's going to be really, really tough for us. The guy I want to face, uh, probably the goalkeeper. We have uh, a lot of friends in the, in the Spanish team, so players like, uh, like Viran, Mos, like uh, Gonzalo, uh, Gubindo, who are my close friends. They show they can beat everybody. They have a really good defense and uh, one of the best keepers in the world, so they can, they can put us in a lot of trouble. Our strength is a group, the team. We are, when we are all together, I think we're, we're, we're dangerous, so that's what we have to be, all together and, and push. So the ambitions are clear and the match strategy is to be determined later on. One thing is for certain, the current world champions France, they are full of confidence in their quest of winning a fourth EHF European Championship. Let's take a look how they got to the semi-finals. They have the advantage, they have possession. There should be an opening, there is an opening, and Guigo has scored! France in front again, 30 seconds to go. The attacking uh, duo to find a very quick solutions. Clay others just made it more difficult for them with his second goal. Twenty-five twenties become 25, 22, but Luka Karabatic. So that wraps it up for France. Now let's look at the Spaniards. You might know the Spanish always up for a laugh, but what happens when you give players jokes and tell them not to laugh? That's in fact what our mobile reporter Spela set out to do a couple or yesterday, a couple of days ago before they headed down here to Zagreb. And um, let's see how Alex Dushebaev and David Balaguer dealt with this one and if they could keep a straight face. What do ducks wear to a tuxedos? Did, uh, no, I Did you hear about the guy that lost his left arm and leg in a car crash? He's all right now. Okay. Did you hear about the ice that lost his job? 
Still, it was crushed. Uh, why can't zoo animals take test? Too many cheetahs. What is fast food? A chicken running down the road. Uh, how do you call computer that sings? Ah, deal. Where do the cows go for a first date? To the movies. What do you uh, do you call cheese that is in yours? Natural cheese. What do you call a fake noodle? An impasta. Say to the green light. Don't look, I'm changing. What do you call an alligator in a vest? An investigator. <laughs> the, the, the last one. Uh, what did the dog say after a hard workout? That was wrong. I win, no? <laughs> no. No, for sure. Well, Alex and David, I think you are both winners in this one and I think you had some pretty great fun here. So thank you for doing that for us. Now, you can be a winner as well because that's in our emoji pick. We're always looking for winners. Reminder here, pick your two winners for the semi-finals. So you have the rooster, you have the bull, the couch and the beer to choose from who will win the semi-finals vote below. Now let's talk about the Spaniards facing the world champions France. Spain, they are trying to go one better than last year when they made it to the final but lost to Germany. So here they have a chance to go to the final again and then win the crown, the one crown that they have never won before, the EHF Euro title. Who did they beat on the way? Let's find out. They've got the experience, the average 84 internationals per player. Oh, brilliant! What class to open up the biggest gap yet. Three goals in the second half. Arinho. Clever. Nice little lob, first one of the game. And another goal for Figueres with his third now. Meter 93. Kilos is a big unit, but they can't stop Spain from scoring. Now on to the second final of the night, that is Denmark against Sweden with a throw-off at 8.30. The favorite team are the Danes, who've only lost one match in the competition so far. They rely on their attack. On average, they score two more goals than the opposition. On the, on the Swedish side, they are, of course, the record title holders with four EHF Euro titles. One problem, maybe a little bit, on the squad as Albin Lagergren. He had to be replaced with Andreas Sederholm. Now, in this derby, this all Scandinavian derby, it's something um, very much exciting to look forward to. And the Swedes, they very much relish taking on the role of the underdog. Both teams were ready to talk to us about pressure, about the opposition, and they were ready to preview the matchup for us. So here we go. Well, 
ambition is to, to go to the final and uh, look what happened. Uh, but it's uh, a very uh, difficult match uh, against uh, Sweden. Uh, we have to take it serious and, uh, and can we come in the, in the final, then can everything uh, happen. Well, the pressure was there from the beginning, so uh, I don't think it's uh, getting bigger. Uh, we are, we're full of confidence and uh, we have a huge amount of quality in our team, so we are ready for this game and want to give everything to go in the finals. We all look forward to this uh, weekend and we hope we can achieve something big. I think they have a very well defense and run a lot in the, in the attack for, for the counter. Uh, and we have to play very well in our attack uh, to, to win this game. They are really good players and they have Mikkel Hansen that are a really good player and then, then I have Niklas Landin in the goalkeeper so, and he's really good so I think they are, have a really good defense. But yeah, I think we, we can beat them. I, I expect a hard fight in a very high uh, uh, speed. Um, Sweden wants to uh, play very fast and uh, do a lot of fast breaks and so do we. Uh, and we're not expecting an easy game, it's going to be a tough opponent and uh, We'll see who the better team is. A little bit like the game against uh, Norway, a uh, game with a high tempo and uh, a lot of fast breaks uh, and two good defense and uh, hopefully uh, two good goal goalkeepers. We have a lot of players who can uh, contribute to, uh, to winning. We, we have 16 players in the, in the team that all can go in and uh, make a difference. So uh, we're going to focus on ourselves and try to uh, bring the best of our game. If we go out on top, uh, it's because our defense uh, and fast break worked. Now my guest of today is Stefan Löfgren. With Sweden, he has won four EHF Euro titles. He also won the World Championship in 99 and he's here, he's here today to talk Bang & Boys, Sweden of Today and Euro 2020. Now he's here. Stefan, thanks so much for joining me here on the couch for the EHF Euro 2018 live show. You are EHF executive member. What does that entail, that role? I entail uh, being on the board, so to speak, and discussing and taking decisions uh, mostly of the future uh, of the EHF and the European handball, easy said. And for the EHF Euro 2018, what is your involvement here? The involvement here is that we have an executive meeting uh, during uh, this fine tournament, uh, but in the tournament uh, itself I don't have any, any specific role. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about yourself. So you've been on the, or you were on the Swedish national team, you started in 93 if that's correct. Yeah. And um, you've had great success with the Swedish team. Can you talk about what it was like winning your first EHF Euro in uh, 94? It's a long time ago, <laughs> very many years ago, but of course uh, as we were successful winning the first Euro, played in, in Portugal, it's got a lot of good memories as well. So uh, I was new in the team for me personally, it was my first tournament and uh, being able to be a part of a team winning uh, a medal at that time is uh, really special and when you win your first tournament with a national team. And we also had a great, great final game, one of the best games I think that I have ever played uh, with the national team. National team, so it uh, it was a great experience. Even if it uh, many years ago, it I have it in my mind. And that really somewhat kicked off the the big success for the Swedish team because you came in fourth two years later, and then came really the winning three EHF Euros in a row, not to forget the World Championship as well. Can you talk about how was it possible to to have this success on such consistent level? Oh, it's, it's, yeah, I think it's a long uh, discussion to take it, but, but somehow we had uh, a team in a great, uh, with a great age category fitting together, had this almost the same team during a lot of years, uh, saying that we could develop the team uh, and also our game together, uh, not changing uh, all too many players. And uh, at that time, I think that was crucial. I think we also had, uh, of course, many of the best players at that time, perhaps in the world, and, and that's make it easier, of course. Uh, so, so 
but why and how it started many many years before of course in, in introduction uh, a way of uh, practicing in Sweden uh, in how much you do it and in the way you do it and so on so there are many people involved not only those who got the gold medal of course so one who plays a heavy role played a heavy role was your coach Bank Johansson mm -hmm. can you talk about yeah what was it like under him Nice, <laughs> of course. He was a very special uh, coach and leader, I think. It was more of a leadership, I would say. He gave us a lot of trust, uh, but we have to show uh, and also take part of all discussions and uh, also show that it was the right way. And in Sweden, uh, it was one of, perhaps one of the first or the first uh, coach or leader that showed the way in giving the trust to the players also during timeouts, uh, not only speaking 100% from him but also letting the players today that's the way everywhere but I think that was the first leader uh, as I know uh, in giving the trust in that way so he was really good in, in uh, having uh, a really good tense with which players are, are really good at the time being now and also putting the team together but uh, I think every coach is trying to, to uh, reach that. So from 98 to 2002 you won uh, the three EHF Euros in a row um, back at that time, was it? Did you feel like there was a lot of pressure on you guys, or because you're talking a lot about trust, so it, it seems like it was more easy going than maybe now. Uh, the only the only time I felt pressure, and I think the team felt pressure, was the Euro in in Sweden, because then you were a part of the society, walking the streets, and everybody was cheering and greeting uh, and, and so on. And it has also shown historically that it is really hard to win a Euro for the home uh, team as well. But that's the only time I felt the pressure. Otherwise, and it was also another uh, media landscape at that time when we won our first. You did not notice and and in what was written in Sweden and so on when you didn't have the digital uh, development as now. So yes, one time it was really a, a burden, but what, uh, otherwise it was uh, easy going is perhaps a good word. So it was a burden, but you won it at home. So then that pressure must have just, uh, I mean, how did it feel winning that at home? Of course, it's it's uh, it's really great. You play in your own country. You play for your uh, relatives, uh, families, and, and so on. And you play for Sweden. And, and then to be able to win the final like that, it was really great. Just the moment after you, you win a title like that, I don't think... I, at least I, I don't remember anything. You are just in some kind of, uh, uh, I don't know, <laughs> somewhere else. But afterwards, just looking at the pictures or, or games or seeing the face, or then, then you can see, of course, you are really happy, but you're also relieved in a way because it was uh, a lot of pressure, but it ended well. It ended well, and then came 10 years where results weren't quite coming in. What was different? What happened? As a positive thing were, as I mentioned earlier, that we had the same team, but we also had a big part of the team leaving at the same time and uh, then uh, we haven't been able to get new players in, uh, giving them the experience of playing Euros and the big games and uh, that was also the negative part of it of course that it was hard to, to make the transition in that way. Uh, that's one part of it and, and at the same time perhaps we didn't have the players also uh, out in the clubs in Europe at that time playing for the absolute top clubs but uh, then you see also how many teams or countries has developed during that time and today we see I mean we have uh, one team uh, playing the, the semi-finals uh, the other three teams are new compared to the 2016 Euro in, in Poland so we have a big diversity from great teams and uh, so I think a lot of teams has to uh, really be not satisfied but get used to, to be one time number eight and next time you can be in the semi-final. So that's a big uh, difference uh, from, from 94 or 98 or whatever, then it was a smaller amount of teams. Um, now we fast forward from 2002, 16 years and this is the first time that Sweden are into the semi-final without you. First time since then. Mm -hmm. um, now let's take a look at how the Swedish team got there. That's good. Yes! Oh, Tolving scores and despite being two players down, Sweden score. 
Nine minutes to go. Jepson, Gottfriedsen, Tolbling, yes! He's had a slow start to the tournament. Slipped there by uh, O'Sullivan, maybe a little resin coming to play in it as he uh, tried to find the ball to the line, but it went off the wrong way. Oh, lovely! Dummy the first shot, Jepson, and then followed through. So Sweden now through to the semi-finals. When you look at that, uh, when you see them in the semi-finals, what emotions does that trigger in you? First of all, when I see that, knowing that we played a really bad game against the Icelandic team, the first game, and, and being now in the semi-finals, I mean, uh, it's really hard to understand uh, sometimes how the, the sport is working. But I think the team uh, got together after that loss and has really done a great performance, in particular in the game against Croatia. And I think now they know of what kind of level they can play. and also have to play in the semi-final if, if they're going to come through to a final. But uh, now it's, uh, it's really important to be spot on uh, today because you don't get a second chance. And, uh, but I'm sure that every team, of course, and in particular also for, for my Swedes, that they want to do and take the chance. So how did you feel like did the team develop into the, the team they are now for this Euro? Looking strong? A little bit weird too, that last game against Norway going through despite a loss, um, kind of like how you mentioned with Iceland. But how do you, how do you feel about the team? I'm just not looking at the team only during the Euro. We made it, they made a great World Championship, uh, lost championship as well. And I see them over more of the games, of course, during the year. We know that we have the capacity in the team. We have a rather young team, the, the youngest team in the semi-finals. Mm -hmm. But uh, in any way, they st are still in progress. But of course, uh, they can be down here, but they can also be up here. So we have to get a more stability in, in the team. But I think that will come uh, with, with more uh, experience. Uh, and, and you do your games, you do your tournaments as well. But um, for now, the measurement is going to be how did you play in the semi-final mm -hmm. and how did you play in the game after mm -hmm. that. So that will um, be the picture after this tournament, I think. A little bit of a problematic situation maybe on the position of right back because Albin Lagergren had to go home and he's replaced by Sederholm. Can you talk about how you see that situation? First of all, also Johan Jakobsson, our, uh, uh, he was in the team from the beginning, also went home because they are injured both. So that's, of course, that's not the perfect uh, preparations. On the other hand, uh, I don't think now the, the Danes don't have any pictures of a Silver man doing a good analyze of him, if he's going to play in that position or if the coach is going to play a, a right-hander. So uh, you have to turn that around to, to something positive uh, and try to use it. And I also think that could put a team together. But of course, uh, I think everybody, because of Lagerin has played a really good tournament, would like to have him here and you don't uh, would like to have any player injured. What type of mentality do you need in order to go through to the finals now at this stage of the tournament? You have to, uh, you, you cannot go on, on and thinking, I don't want to lose this game. You have to give it a chance to win this game. I think it's going to be really interesting because it's, a, it's, a, it's against our neighbors, Denmark, and the players know each other really well. And, and this, this um, great atmosphere in the games, Norway, Sweden, or Denmark, Sweden, is really special. So I think every player is looking forward to just that game a little bit more than if you would have had any other opponent. But uh, you don't get the second chance. You have to do it today. And maybe before we look ahead a little bit closer, even at the semifinals, um, can we talk about the EHF Euro 2020? Because there's an involvement from the Swedish side. Can you talk about the changes that will happen in two years? Yeah, that's the first Euro uh, with 24 teams. I mean, the Euro has developed from 12 teams to 16, what we have now, and that will be the first Euro with 24 teams. I think that's a great development for, for the European handball. And we also have uh, three organizers. Mm -hmm. Sweden is one of them, uh, organizing it with Austria and with Norway together. So that's also a new situation for everybody. Uh, so I think that's um, quite a big challenge, mm -hmm. but could also put Europe together uh, in, in a positive way for all the teams. We have a lot of teams now uh, going into the qualification phase, uh, of course, that will be interesting as well. But uh, a new era, I would say. And we will say we will have a, the big part of the tournament and the final weekend in Sweden. And uh, just this weekend, uh, the Swedes, the Austrian, and, and the Norwegian Hammer Federation is meeting up for a big, big workshop here in Zagreb. So, so the work with the Euro 2020 has already started. Mm -hmm. 
what are the advantages of having 24 teams participate as opposed to 16 that we have participating in this edition? First of all, I think, as I said before, the development of the handball and all handball countries uh, has really been great in Europe. And I think now uh, Europe is, is really on the, on the right level to get more teams together because we won't have any big, big results because mm -hmm. every team is really on a, on a great level that will reach the Euro. Uh, for many, uh, the, the Czech team was a, a big surprise in this tournament, but that's also showing how many teams are coming up to a level so in that case we have a, a bigger spread of course a bigger interest and a more teams involved so I think it's the right time okay now um, I won't ask you to pick who will win between Sweden and Denmark but um, the other semi-final and the potential opponent for the final then France against Spain what do you make of that matchup well of course as uh, with the history of, of France, I think they have to be the favourite. Mm -hmm. uh, they have played uh, all those important games more than any team the last years, I think. And uh, But Spain did a really good performance the last game uh, against Germany and before they lost the game, not so, were not so happy. So I think a lot of the pressure from them could be relieved now and that could also be a positive effect for the Spain, Spanish team. So, uh, But favourite, uh, I think everybody would say that and that has to, the role has to be taken by the French team. Okay, so your winner is going to be France? No, but they are the favorite. <laughs> but we have a, the thing is, we have a prediction game here yeah. on the show. And whenever we have a guest, the guest has to predict okay. uh, the winner. And you, you get an easy one here because sometimes we ask for top scorer mm -hmm. among two different matches or even, yeah, even more. Sometimes we ask for a precise score. So we're just asking you to pick the winner. And, and you're not even involved. We're not asking for Sweden. So. No, no, no. Then I have to go with a favorite uh, of France. Okay. Yeah. So France, you heard it. France is Stefan Lufgren's pick. Stefan, thank you so much for coming. Um, our guests never leave here empty-handed. That just, we cannot let that happen. So um, either you go for the official mug, the EHF Euro 2018 mug for yeah. a nice coffee, or the official mascot. I love coffee. So I will go with the mug. All right, a mug for you, Mr. Thank you. Stefan, thank you very much for coming. So remember to vote to take part in our prediction game. And I am reminding you of the score. It is guests five points, fans five points, and Brian stands at four points. So Denmark have played a convincing tournament so far, especially in the attack, as I mentioned earlier. On their quest to winning a third EHF Euro title, they have now made it to the semi-finals. And let's find out how they got there. If they win here today, it will have been a good salvage operation for the Danes after losing to the Czech Republic. And it signposts their intent in the main round. To the big teams in this tournament, Hansen again! Goal number six and Green celebrates. And there's one in it. It's definitely a way back in for Germany. That's a great goal from Lindberg. Denmark staying calm, keeping cool. Nice work, Zachariasen. Just moving the ball around so well. So we are now moving closer to the throw-off time between France and Spain. And speaking of deadlines, there's one more deadline for you. That's for the all-star team vote. This is a vote presented by Salming. So um, here's a look at the all-star team vote.
So you saw it on the screen. Go to ehf-euro.com to vote for your all-star team. And the deadline is tomorrow, Saturday, 12 o'clock. So don't miss that. Now, throughout the course of the tournament, we have seen some outstanding performances by goalkeepers. And that gives us the chance to show you some of the best saves of the tournament so far. Down the middle again, oh, another one! And Gerard is just causing misery to the Swedish attack. Can he stop Maniskov? He has done, and the Czech Republic have the win! Macedonia beaten! Murphy the hero! And now clawing their way back in. Mural has stolen it. He's got a winger. Straight down to Jönsson. Oh, good save, Stivanovic! It's been the goalkeeper's day here today. All hail the hero. 15,000 fans go berserk. Room for Slovenia. Oh, goodness me. And he's come straight back down the other end. And Rivera's going to score. No, he's not going to score. As Kastelic denies him. Set. Can't get it to Pekula. It's going to be overturned. Germany are in trouble, are they? Oh, fantastic save. What a save that is from Damka. Groetsky did one earlier in the tournament. And what about that for a save from Damka? That's even better than Groetsky's. How important could that prove to be? That leaves me to reveal the fans' choice of our emoji prediction. You have gone for France and Denmark. And you know what? what? Brian, he has taken the opposite route once again as he has picked Spain and Sweden to go through. So we are in for some great action tonight. In fact, only a couple of minutes away. And that's why I'm telling you to head over to ehftv.com to catch Paul Bray. He should already be in his commentary. Don't miss the action. Enjoy it. We'll see you back here tomorrow at 5 p.m. Until then, bye-bye.